afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is John Barrett, editor of Electronics Sourcing Magazine, um, and welcome to the second of the three electronic sourcing live debates that are taking place this week at Electronica 2010. Um, this afternoon, for the next 30 minutes or so, we're going to um, open up a debate about the future of catalogue distribution um, and its role in the electronics supply chain. Um, I'd like to just start with a little bit of an anecdote uh, about my uh, involvement with catalogue distribution over the years, because um, it was sort of 20 years or so ago that I uh, took my first engineering role. And I remember reading through the job description and I came to a paragraph that confused me somewhat uh, because it explained my role as, as a librarian, which somewhat confused me because I thought I was going to be an engineer. And then suddenly I realised that our engineering department was effective a effectively a library because that's where the knowledge was and our design skills relied upon the knowledge and the past experience of others and an awful lot of that was tied up in the distribution catalogues that made up a huge part of that library and ever since that day I've recognized the the huge value that the catalog distribution companies bring to the supply chain um, not simply in the ability to deliver products quickly but just in the wealth of knowledge that those books uh, comprise um, we've got two of those companies here today, so I would like to ask our guests just to introduce themselves very briefly, and then we're going to dive into some questions that our readers have uh, proposed um, on the future of catalogue distribution. So, over to you guys, just a quick brief introduction. Yes. Sorry. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Glenn Jarrett. I'm responsible for electronics marketing at RS Components. Um, you may know RS, we have uh, electronics components as well as everything else the industrial um, customer may need to run his factory, run his, his building. Um, and uh, I've been there for about 18 months, joined from Volume Distribution. Uh, I'm Mark Bolanen, uh, the Vice President for uh, Mauser Electronics. Uh, we're based out of the US and in the last couple of years have uh, uh, grown our business in uh, Europe and Asia. Uh, been in distribution for over 25 years now and uh, spent some of that in uh, the catalogue side but also the volume side. So I look forward to being here and thanks very much. Okay, well the uh, questions we're going to run through now have been uh, proposed by readers of electronic sourcing. They're going to be purchasing professionals in the electronics industry. Um, the first is um, a kind of little bit light-hearted but also quite a contentious question which is the role of the printed catalogue. Um, the demise of the printed catalogue has been discussed for many years now. Um, it, it remains, um, but it's mixed into a whole range of uh, sort of media platforms that uh, catalogue distribution companies are using. Um, and just interested to get some opinions on the, the role of the printed catalogue um, in the market currently. So, uh, Mark? I, I guess I got the mic, so it's me to go first. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, I'm probably quite clear at the start that uh, uh, we certainly see a future in the catalogue. Uh, uh, we still produce over a, a million paper catalogues a year, so we do cut down lots of rainforests, but uh, uh, certainly there is a future for it. But, but really, we, you need to start thinking very globally about the, the market, and uh, certain areas of the world are in different parts of the cycle with regards to use of paper catalogues versus the internet. Uh, when we break down those three geographies, there's still parts of the world which are taken on the paper catalogue at a far greater rate uh, than some of the more developed areas who are moving more towards the web. We, um, we now produce 14 different versions uh, with six languages, and I uh, say over a million of these go out every year still. And even though we see a huge development of the, uh, the business on the internet side, uh, we, we do see a future for the, uh, for the catalogue. Uh, I think in Europe, we're probably going to see in uh, mainland Europe, in some of the key countries, uh, probably yes, less use of the paper catalogue, uh, but in some of the less developed areas, probably still the, the take-up of that paper catalogue. When it comes to design engineers, they still like to use two different things, and uh, we actually have a lot of design engineers who will use the paper catalogue to, to find the parts and then go on the web to order the parts. It then comes also down to the uh, age of the engineer. 
Uh, of course, the younger engineer is looking very much more now uh, towards the web than they are a, a paper catalogue. So we've actually uh, uh, developed uh, sort of a halfway house, which is the, the online catalogue, and uh, that enables the uh, engineer or, or buyers to actually go onto that online catalogue uh, and use some quite nice features. Uh, the one I always like to say is the sticky notes feature. Uh, design engineers love to write in catalogues, and uh, uh, what we've developed with the, the online catalogue is the ability for people to go on uh, and, and put their sticky notes on the catalog uh, online, which means when they go back, it's, it's still there. So it's, it's really like a paper catalog, but it's online. And uh, yeah, we don't see the end of the paper catalog yet. Will it come someday? Uh, perhaps, but uh, it's certainly, it's not there yet. Thanks, Mark. Go ahead. Thanks, Mark. Um, I guess comments from uh, RS Components. Um, we have 34 versions of our catalogue worldwide um, in 11 different languages. It's not a competition, Mark, but we won that one. Um, <laughs> so it, the challenge for us really is um, we're adding thousands and thousands of new products into that paper catalogue every, every year, hundreds of thousands every year. And it's a major challenge squeezing all the extra information in when actually you don't want to cut down more trees and make the catalogue so enormous that no one can ever use it. So you've got to work out what you take out as well. And, and consequently, the role of the internet now um, is really playing a, a fantastic dual role with the catalogue because we can signpost extra information from the catalogue that's available on the internet, enhance ranges, enhance parametric searches, for example, that engineers love. So we can signpost all of that from the catalogue. And so more and more, I think, we're going to find that the catalogue has keys and, and critical information about um, our range and our products and technologies, especially the newer items, but signposting onto a kind of dual purpose web uh, that everyone's now seeing. Um, in terms of web business, you know, RS approximately has 50% of its business conducted through e-commerce channels online. Um, yet, for example, in China, where internet penetration and internet usage isn't really enough to justify just going to a web-only offer. It's only about 15, 16% today, but growing very fast. So the catalogue plays a very important role there. Um, and I think that the challenge for us is to make the catalogue become um, what, what used to be the Bible for design engineers 20 years ago, for librarians. Mm -hmm. yep. um, really, that's, that's got to transition to become a Bible online for our customers. OK, thank you. Next question is, uh, um, it, it, I think this is important to, to both seasoned engineers who've been um, in, the, in the sort of purchasing role for many years, but also very importantly to the next generation of new engineers that are coming through, um, uh, coming through the colleges and universities now and will be in a purchasing role uh, very quickly. Um, and that is to be able to differentiate the benefits that catalogue distribution offers to them as purchasers of electronic components compared with other, dis other distribution models out there um, that are somewhat different. So um, maybe we'll start with you, Glenn, this time. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I think um, uh, Catalog really uh, differentiates itself in terms of the, uh, the buying community purely because of the range that it offers. Um, we offer uh, an enormous range of components that you just won't find available for stock and delivery uh, from the volume distribution community. Um, and when you want to get uh, a product built the next day, you need to have availability. Um, if it's a, a designer that's actually buying as well, then he doesn't want to wait a few weeks for delivery for someone to, to actually order it from the manufacturer, stock it, and then pass it on. Yeah, they might have very quick turnaround times, uh, but it's, it's kind of difficult if you haven't got it on the shelf to guarantee next day delivery. And typically, engineers leave things right to the last moment before they build their prototype, and they have to get it out as soon as possible. Um, so availability, absolutely. Um, I think MOQs, minimum order quantities, um, will supply to any customer, no matter how big, no, no matter how small, in any, any quantity they want, um, in whatever format they'd like it to be delivered, whether it's a, a single IC in a box or, or thousands of ICs in trays, um, ready for production or, or just purely for, for building their prototype. Um, I think it's easy as well, as a, as a volume distributor, to um, to sell the next generation of products and to sell tomorrow's technology today. Um, but 
for the life of the catalogue, um, we have to have products in the catalogue that we've got on the shelf that are available today. So there's a very much a um, it, it's here, it's now, it's real element to the catalogue as well. Um, it's not always available through uh, through volume distribution. And I think probably the biggest differential, differential um, is ease of use, where as a catalogue um, we've had to transition from offline paper trading to online and um, to give uh, our, our customers the very best experience in terms of being easy to do business with is critical. So we're very easy for you to buy from as a, as a, as a supplier. Um, I think the other thing is we're actually set up to do that type of business, whereas um, other types of distributors are not set up to take a high mix, low volume style of ordering. In fact, it's very difficult for them to cope with that, and that's exactly what the catalogue service is there to do. Thanks, Glenn. Yeah, this is uh, not particularly contentious because I agree with everything that uh, Glenn says. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, we come from uh, the same side on that. I'd like to add, you know, one thing when, you, when you're comparing a, a catalogue distributor to, to a volume distributor, uh, one of the lines we always use is that uh, volume distributors stock volume components, and, uh, and, and that's a very true statement. Uh, they do a fantastic job at, at uh, shipping volume components, but the likes of, uh, you know, Mauser and, uh, and RS, we, we look very much towards uh, how we get the latest parts to market uh, and bring those out quicker for parts which actually have no demand. Uh, if you actually go to a volume distributor to try to get them to put some parts on the shelf which have uh, zero demand, it's normally quite a short conversation. So the, uh, the focus that you're finding now from most manufacturers when they're looking at uh, new products to market, the place they actually come to is the catalog stroke online distributors, whatever you like to call us. Uh, you know, we're the people now who get the, the newest parts out on the, on the shelves as quicker than anybody else. And there's been, a, if we look at the last few years, um, people are now beginning to understand distribution is different, that uh, we're not all the same. And from the meetings that we have with our suppliers now, the nice thing is they now categorize us very differently, and they do categorize the, uh, uh, the catalog or high service distributors as different from the volume distributors, and they are using us as the route to market for those new products. So if, if, you, if you look at the... Uh, the strap line of Mauser is uh, your newest products for your newest designs, and that, that's very much for the reason is our focus is the design engineer, and uh, our aim is to bring those parts out as quickly as possible online, and uh, as Mauser in Europe, we bring out two catalogues a year now, and uh, to bring it out in paper format you know, twice a year, so it's reasonably uh, quick to market as well. But uh, as I say, volume distributors stock volume components we're the guys up here, not too much for RS, hopefully, for, uh, uh, for the new parts, but uh, it's, uh, yeah, we're the guys for uh, new designs. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much.